Welcome back to Almost Live here at Streaming Media West 2015. I have Aslam Kadir with me from Elemental. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so a question, of course, everybody knows that, um, that Elemental was acquired by Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Amazon had sort of a cloud play. Elemental had an on-prem play. They're hybrid plays. How is the combined um, efforts of both Elemental and AWS helping the industry work through what types of solutions are best for them? That's a great question. And actually, as you probably know, Elemental introduced Elemental Cloud Solution about three, four, three and a half years ago, and it's been very successful. And what that did was essentially take our software-defined video story, which is what we're about, we're a software that runs on appliances, that runs in virtual machines on blades, or runs in the cloud, and we introduced it in the cloud. It's the exact same software, same APIs, same bits running there, so you know that if something is running on your, on, on the, on your prem on ground, it can burst and run in the cloud, and will give you the exact same output. So we introduced that three and a half years ago. It's been really successful, growing rapidly. But when we did that, we wanted to make sure that we were, just as we were agnostic about which uh, infrastructure you wanted to run it on, whether you want to run, run our solutions on, on you know, appliances, in virtual machines, or in the cloud. In the same way, on the cloud, we wanted to make sure that we were relatively agnostic, that our whole intent was that infrastructure is available and we'll be able to run on any infrastructure that made sense. So um, what we did in, in, uh, then was to create, create kind of an abstraction and not utilize all of the services that AWS has that are extremely, as we know, very rich in the kinds of services that they provide. Uh, what, we are, what we are doing now more and more is to ensure that we can actually leverage the richness of the AWS services to even make the elemental cloud-based implementation a lot more efficient, a lot more performant, and a lot more reliable. So um, we've already helped our customers move to the cloud. We've got many, many customers now who are running completely in the cloud. We have a, a pretty large number that are running on-prem and bursting to the cloud. We introduced a live streaming in the cloud solution as well. So we could take any, you could source content and we have SDI encoders, you can take it and push out a HLS or RTMP or any other feed that we would then push into the cloud or RTP or using FEC. We, did, we take it into the cloud and we do all the processing and then distribute through Delta also in the cloud into CloudFront and then right out there. So you have complete end-to-end -end solution from a video pipeline perspective is available today. And what we're trying to do more is to make that, make the ingest of content into the cloud a lot easier, to make the running of the content in the cloud much more reliable, much more performant, much more robust, um, and to make the actual delivery of the content out there much more flexible in the ways in which that content can be consumed. So let's take that to a practical example. Something like a live sporting event. How, how would you help sort of eliminate the roadblocks for, for something like a live sporting event? So, um, so, for example, you could think about a production. So, one of the biggest costs for these live sporting events is, is production. Sure. So, you take your, you know, your big truck rolls out into an event and you essentially do your production in the truck. Then once you do your production in the truck, you could think about a, uh, a stream of that being pushed into the cloud, another stream going up into the satellite to be delivered maybe to your primary screen distribution um, kind of facilities. Uh, but you could look at a stream going into the cloud where we would essentially take that stream in RTP FEC or RTMP or, or uh, not HLS that much because you want to reduce the latency sure. and make sure you have a you know, low latency feed. Uh, we'd go ahead and transcode it in the cloud, create all the different ABR bit rates, do all the different packaging, and then push it out through CloudFront into a whole OTT uh, solution. So you could have a complete OTT implementation in a live sporting event without having to really do anything more other than just put a push a feed into the cloud. Okay. So let's talk about the difference in terms of investment versus risk for hardware encoding versus software encoding. Tell me about that. So you know, hardware 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 encoders are very good at doing um, at doing uh, at implementing technology that's kind of gone through a maturation phase and it's mature. Mm -hmm. Um, because what you do with that is essentially you take that algorithm sure. and you burn it into silicon, right. and then that silicon can perform that algorithm in the most efficient way, most power efficient way, most performant way, because it's burned into the silicon. 
Well, that work, that used to work completely fine when you had 10-year innovation cycles driven by operator right. you commercials. Like or something like that. Basically. Correct. Exactly. And it took, it, it took 10 years, they would monetize that over 10 years they, because they were driving the monetization and the innovation. Um, what hardware is not very good at doing is changing rapidly. And, and what happened um, six, seven years ago when the iPad got introduced was there was a shift in power and, and where innovation was taking place. And innovation shifted from the operators, from a video perspective. The, the, the MVPs really shifted to the device manufacturers. Okay. So now, now the, the and, and that's a completely independent entity, as you know, and they off do their own thing. They have their own cycles, right? Exactly. They want you to renew every every 18 months, they have a renewal cycle, or every two years, they have a renewal cycle. That changes the economics completely mm. of a hardware-based solution. Right. Now you've got to basically mature, optimize, deploy, and get your return within that period of time. Whereas a software-based solution doesn't suffer from that, and a software-based solution is much more flexible, can rapidly change, can, you can you know, go to Dash, Dash, Dash's current implementation, the next implementation comes out, you change that around, you, know, you fine-tune your HEVC, you continue to fine-tune it, you don't have to wait for, for 36 months before so, that happens. So part of this hardware-software discussion is hardware appliance, ASIC-based versus general purpose computing with software-based. Is that what I'm understanding? Right. And general purpose computing, you're right, I man. General purpose computing has reached a point now where, you know, with Moore's law, it's yeah. become powerful enough that you can string together off-the-shelf silicon and really create powerful systems that can do the kind of things in real time that were not possible. As an example, you know, we introduced a 4K HEVC solution. Right. In fact, I was going to ask on the 4K side. The well, anybody introduced right. it. The reason we could right. do it is because we did it in software. Right. We bonded together, you know, four CPUs and, and four GPUs at right. that point for our initial solution. Right. Within six months, we moved off and bonded now two CPUs and two GPUs Ooh, okay. to actually get the same 4K HEVC live P60 solution. So let's talk about two other parts of that when we're talking about sort of these future techs that general purpose computing can work in. One would be sort of the futuristic um, virtual reality. The other would be the closer to home 1080p 60 and HDR. And I hear a lot around the um, around the show floor and in conversations where people are saying, "Okay, it's it's interesting for us to talk about 4K, but in reality, we think we're going to get lift on HDR and 1080p 60." Um, so that's sort of a near-term solution. And then, like I said, the f the far-term virtual reality. How is Elemental addressing each of those aspects? So 1080p60, you know, we we believe that's a that's a fine solution. We actually demonstrated using our software encoders 1080p60 and 1080p120, mm. just to okay. also show that you can sure. continue to go higher frame <laughs> rates for, for, uh, and okay. what are the benefits of going with true. higher frame rates. True, true. Um, and HDR, you know, uh, as we all know, there's a lot of the industry is going through a period of um, um, change here where we're not settled on a particular HDR technology. There are four or five different relatively viable uh, options out there. We've been working with Dolby as an example on Dolby Vision for the last three years. We've been working with Technicolor for the, for the last 12 months or so with you know, some of the BBC and Philips implementations. We've demonstrated all of those along with HDR10. Okay? Okay. So I think the industry needs to get to a point where no, we are we are trying to we are trying to be at the forward edge of the of the innovation, so people can do their proof of concepts and sure. and understand what works and what doesn't work. But the industry needs to reach a point where we can all kind of get around one standard, which is hopefully backward compatible in a way, so right. that you you don't have to you know increase double your cost of distribution, etc., processing and distribution. Um, so our perspective is HDR is an extremely good technology. We believe in next generation video experiences being more pixels, better pixels, faster pixels, and cheaper pixels, right? And pixels that sound really good, so let's put that aside. <laughs> okay. but, the, sure. but, but the more being, you know, yeah, right. 4K is good, and 8K maybe at some point, right. Right. but it by itself doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sure. the whole experience. The whole experience is 4K with better pixels, which okay. is HDR, which sure. is 422, which is 10-bit right. and 12-bit, right. right. et cetera. Um, and faster high, pixels. And high frame rate faster pixels, okay. high frame rates, and then cheaper pixels, which is HEVC, essentially. Because right. now the pixel, the amount of information is increasing, you've got to squish it down more, you need HEVC. And then you add object-based audio to it, and that to us is the next generation video experience, which we are kind of working and leading the charge on. And then if you take that around and say, what's the other kind of experiences that we see beginning to happen? You know, you mentioned the virtual reality work that's right. going on. You know, we've been working again with a number of virtual reality 
uh, companies um, to and there are a number of that are number of that I can't talk about right now because they are rolling out some really innovative new technologies that are focused around and by the way we could do this with our software based encoding off the bat because we don't have a hardware chip that says you can only do this resolution right. by that right, right. pixel like right that. or this or, or you know even resolutions so we could take arbitrary resolution so they had a square video or an oblong video that went right. you know uh, 2k by exactly. Right, exactly so so the video Resolutions are all weird, right. but our software solution can take care of it yeah. completely. So we've been working with these companies to actually demonstrate. We demonstrated IBC, a mm -hmm. uh, couple of different uh, video, virtual reality technologies. And we really think that that is really a good uh, combination with all these other, you know, produced, professionally produced uh, experiences that you see where you, where you can essentially think about this if you, if you take a seat in the front of an award show or, or, or in, the, in the box of a sporting event and plonk one of these cameras, right. I mean figuratively you take right. a seat and you plonk a camera, now you can have millions of people around the world uh, experience what it is to experience a particular event as if they were sitting in that seat. Okay? I think those are the kinds of experiences that are going to become, uh, that are going to drive some of this from a, from a perspective of adoption because now the technology and the horsepower is becoming available to enable these experiences. And for, from our perspective, our software-defined video story plays in perfectly because it gives us the flexibility to do all this, all in the context of our current software solution, whether it's running on the ground or in the cloud. Okay, very good. So we've been speaking with Aslam Kadir from Elemental. Um, this is almost live at Streaming Media West 2015. We'll be back shortly. Thank you.